Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth and final episode of Icarus Proud Bottoms World of Typing Weekly. Let's begin. Week five. Holy cow, it's the final episode. Thanks for sticking around for the whole show. I know what you're thinking. These jerks better wrap up all these freaking mysteries. If they don't, whammo, slammo, brutal karate chops, death to Holy Wow Studios. Don't worry, all will be revealed. But first... Alright, I'm probably gonna mess up his name again. Let's see. I, I keep, I think I'm missing the D. Proud. There we go. Is... Apparently, still alive, meaning that Holy Wow Studios has been stringing everyone along for five long weeks. Kelso claims that Icarus has a big secret, but that secret is currently unknown. Oop, there we go. Why did Icarus fake his... Fake his death. That's weird, the game's actually kind of laggy for some reason. There we go. What is his secret? Hi, everyone. So, finally, I get to meet the famous Icarus Proudbottom. Wowzers, do we have a lot to talk about. You're not dead? What? What? Jeez, your life is a complete mystery to me. I have no idea what's going on right now, but it's good to see you again. Thanks. Even though none of this turned out as I'd planned, it feels great to be back. You probably have a billion questions to ask me, right? Well, no, not a billion. Only five or so. I think it's time for real answers. Shall we all head into the office and talk things over? Okay, that's fair. Now, there are a lot of little things left unanswered. I don't want to leave any loose ends, so let's take a look at the pile. Please take a seat in that chair, Icarus. Okay, so we have five mysteries here. Why did Icarus fake his own death? Yes. Who was involved and how did they do it? Mm-hmm. Why did they choose this time to do it? Who left the mysterious notes around the building? And who is the weird ghost that's been contacting Mark 22? Yes. You see, we've repurposed your little chair into an interrogation seat. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, let's hammer through these freaking mysteries one by one. Number one. All right, Icarus, why in the freaking hell did you fake your own death? Yeah, what gives? Well, as I think you already know, I was about to lose my typing license. That's bad. However, I have yet another typing related secret. A secret incredibly shocking. That secret would have come out had I stuck around. By faking my death, I hoped to seal away that secret forever. I could sneak away, take a new name, start a new life. My secret would die, along with my name. Okay, sheesh. Alright, will you just reveal your freaking secret? Already? Dear God, what is it? A type, Another typing-related secret. Well, it seems like I have no choice. If faking my own death couldn't keep the secret hidden, what will? I'll spill the beans. There are worse things than a few spilled beans. Well, I guess that depends on the type of beans. Black? Pinto? Okay. I'm going to reveal my shocking secret now. I... I... J 
Just say it, my friend. We can hide this no longer. Okay. Here I go. I can't type. What? But he... But he... He, te he teaches typing. <laughs> Are you serious? Hmm. In a strange way, this makes some sense to me. If the Typing Council continued to investigate Icarus, this would have probably been exposed. Whereas, if he was murdered, the Council would investigate him no more. Although, of course, faking your death because of typing is pretty insane. Dude. My inability to type has weighed heavily on my soul for a very long time. As the years have passed, my shame has only grown greater. Hence, all of this. Okay, we'll talk about we'll talk more about this later. For now, let's keep plowing. To be honest, Icarus's reason doesn't make much sense to me. Unless this dude is like totally crazy. But regardless, that's one down. Now for number two. All right. Who is involved? Oh my god. I get on rolls where I type really well, and then times when I just type horribly. Who is involved in faking the murder? And how was it done? Before you even start to explain, let me just say, wow. This was a pretty shoddy murder faking. Everyone involved should be thoroughly ashamed with themselves. I'll explain everything. But before I do, let's see how closely the player has been paying attention. Uh... Hmm. I have a feeling you're about to find out that I haven't really been paying attention. <laughs> let's see. There's five weeks of game uh, rattling around in the player's head. Let's see what he or she makes of all this. Player, what do you think? Oh, do you think Apollo was involved in faking the murder? Hmm. Okay, well, he did very, very coincidentally show up right before his faked murder. But then again, so did Lucida. Or was Lucida slightly after? I'm not quite sure. They all showed up around the same time. And, uh, you know, Apollo showing up and, well, being related to Icarus is certainly very suspicious. Obviously, since they're related, there's a high chance that, you know, they could... Icarus could have asked for his help. But... But... Mm, for some reason, I want to say no. Correct. My man Apollo is totally innocent. Yay! I got something right. Now watch as I get everything else wrong. The poor guy was just an extreme example of wrong place, wrong time. Do you think Lucida was involved in faking the murder? Hmm. No? Well... Eh, no. Correct. Lucida was not involved with these murder-faking shenanigans. Sorry, Lucida. Do you think Jerry was involved in faking the murder? Hmm. Alright, well... Jerry is Icarus's Native American spirit animal? Was that his full title? Obviously they have a close connection. And Jerry's supposed to protect him, and help him, and guide him in spiritual matters. I'm going to say yes. Correct. Jerry was super involved in the whole thing. <laughs> okay, good. He's my spirit animal. He had to be. Do you think Kelso was also uh, was involved in faking the murder? Okay. Well, he's creepy. He's a slug man thing. He can chameleonize himself into the wall. That is not a word, but I just made it up and it sounds awesome. 
chameleonize. I like that word. I'm gonna keep thinking about that word. Chameleonize. I've been chameleonized. I'm gonna chamele chameleonize you. Yes. I like that word. Oh, uh, Kelso. Involved. Well, he did say he saw it happen, right? So yeah, he had to have been, right? Because, you know, he looks at the cameras, he manages that stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's involved. Correct. Kelso also had a specific role in my scheme. Do you think Mark 22 was involved in faking the murder? Hmm. Okay, well, I've gotten all these right so far. I'm proud of myself for that. But what about this one? Okay, well, Mark 22's been contacted by the thing. The ghost thing. Which is very strange. I want to say the ghost thing, whatever the hell it is, said something. I said get everyone to the ship, right? Get everyone to the ship. But involved? Well, I mean, Mark 22 showed up after, right? So, wouldn't that have to be no? If you showed up after the supposed murder, then wouldn't it be impossible? So, I don't know. I'm gonna say no. Correct. I barely even know this dude. Okay. We didn't plan on him arriving. Oh god, more questions. I'm proud of myself so far, and I'm worried I'm gonna get one wrong, and I'm gonna be like, Oh, everyone right except one. Do you think Icarus Proud Bottom was involved in faking the murder? What? It, it was his own murder. Of, <laughs> of course. Um, correct? What kind of question is that, though? Of course I was involved. It's exactly what I thought, Icarus. Thank you. We're talking about my fake death here. Anyways, I'll explain everything now. Jerry and Kelso knew all along. Jerry was my point man. It was his job to keep the ruse running smoothly. A job he totally failed at. Come on, Jerry. Kelso oversaw everything from the tech room upstairs. Plus, he controlled the lights. Light control is an important part of murder faking. Oh, and sorry about knocking you out, Mark 22. It seemed like you were going to ruin our plan and I had to do something. Let me explain exactly how we faked the death. I had the smashed keyboard and fake blood stored in the closet beforehand. When the lights went out, I quickly put everything into place. Only I could do this, since I have amazing owl night vision. Later, I carried Icarus to the morgue as soon as I could. And then, when you were questioning us, he climbed out and hid in the, lif in the life gauge. Our plan was... Our plan was to bury the casket empty, and nobody would know. However, our plans were kind of ruined when Lucida called in the real authorities. I was planning to investigate the crime myself. I had a little detective suit and everything. Huh. We had a good deal of fake evidence planted. Enough to build a case file and fool the media. But uh, apparently not enough to throw off a real investigator. Yeah, to be honest, it was kind of a flimsy setup. Anyways, the list. Some details are still foggy, but let's kill off number two for now. And now for number three. Why did you decide to fake the murder so soon after the arrival of Apollo? And Lucida. Can I guess? <clears throat> My arrival took you by... Let me try that again. <clears throat> My arrival took you by surprise. You thought you might lose your license, but you didn't think it would happen so soon. When I arrived and broke the news, you panicked and decided to do it immediately. Well, mostly. Our original plan was to make the mystery unsolvable. However, after you arrived... We realized that it was possible to make you, Lucida, seem suspicious. This would work in our benefit. If you were cast in suspicion, you'd be less likely to investigate the murder yourself. It would be an additional safeguard against my secret coming out. Sorry. 
Hey. Okay, but that only covers Lucida. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure I pressed the right letters there. I think I just pressed it too soon, maybe? I don't know. Alright. What about Apollo? Why did you fake the murder? So shortly after you arrived. That was legitimately bad timing. Apollo, could your timing be any worse? What gives? Sorry, man, what do you want me to say? Hmm, okay, we can argue about this later. Let's look at the list again. I guess that kind of covers number three. Number four, this is when things get interesting. Who left? The mysterious notes around the building. Notes. Which notes? I think I know the answer to this one. Player, who do you think left the notes? Oh god, stop asking me questions! Who do you think wrote the mysterious clues around the building? Apollo or Kelso? Well, it had to have been Kelso, right? I don't even know if Kelso's really capable of operating, uh, of like, using a pen or writing. Does he even have hands? But, if Paula wasn't involved in the cover-up, in the cover-up, then, well, it couldn't have been him, right? So, Kelso? Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, hey, Mark-22, can we talk alone for a second? As long as you promise not to rip out my USB storage drive again. Everyone wait in here. We'll be back in a second. Okay. I can't tell if you're being straight with us. Do you really have no idea what's going on? Uh, apparently not. Not sure what you're talking about. Did you leave those notes or not? Yeah, I left those notes. But I left them in magnetic ink so only you could see them. I couldn't let him see them. He can't know. But who? Who can't know what? Holy cow, what a chump! For a robot, you're really easily tricked. The mystery you think you've solved? The murder? Wowzers, that's nothing! I can't risk saying the truth out loud. He might hear. But, there's one man who can tell you the truth safely without him hearing. You must mean... Hiya! Hi again. It's become clear that there's some sort of huge glaring fact that I've missed. So, let's clear this up. Let's start with the absolute basics. Firstly, you keep saying that there's something you want me to do. What exactly is it? What a dummy! I want you to get Icarus and the whole crew out of there. The whole crew? Out of here? Wow, it looks like that place has really screwed with your memory. I didn't realize you were this far gone. By crew, I mean the crew of the IBS Sea Pickle. You know, the spaceship you guys were on before you flew into that vortex? <laughs> Whoa, hey -o. Memories starting to come back. It's about freaking time. Who's the crew of the IBS Sea Pickle? <laughs> well, of course, there's Icarus Proudbottom, Starship Captain. I didn't realize Icarus had such a pointy nose. Also, his eyes look kind of cracked out. Has he been having, like, a lot of coffee? Like 20 cups of coffee? Kelso's the phone master. Hey, there I am. I'm the pilot. <laughs> Jerry is the science commander. Oh my god, Jerry's adorable. Jerry is so adorable. And then there's you. Engineer and weapon master. Weapons master. Yep. 
The crew of the IBS Sea Pickle. Shouldn't it be Space Pickle? Eh, whatever. I remember almost everything now. We encountered the Vortex. Icarus, Jerry, and Kelso took a shuttlecraft to investigate. They, of course, were sucked in. Shortly thereafter, Lucida and I attempted a rescue with another shuttle. We done goofed and were sucked in too. Only you, Digby, remained on the IBS Sea Pickle. And it's a good thing, without your radio communications. I'd have no idea what was going on. Yeah, all you losers got sucked into the vortex. So, think you can get yourself and the crew out of there and back to the ship? Uh, how the heck do I do that? Well, look around yourself. That is no ordinary vortex. Most vortexes are just big holes in space. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something seems wrong here. Hold on. Hold on for a second. I'm, I'm gonna have to check this after this video. Is the plural of vortex vortexes or is it vortices? Is it... I feel like it's vortices or something like that, not vortexes. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna write a note. Vortex, plural, I must know. It feels wrong. But maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe that's perfectly fine. But you guys are walking around, talking, typing, role-playing a murder mystery, etc. Clearly there's some intelligence controlling the dimension you're stuck in. Find out who's controlling that place, and you found your escape. Maybe. Wowzus. This is a serious mind fudge. Regardless, thanks for cluing me in, my ghostly dude. No problem, man. Good luck. See you aboard the IBS Sea Pickle. Hey, Mark 22. Huh? You zonked out there for a second. I was receiving another communication from Digby. I remember everything now. Well, almost everything. So I take it you've known the truth all along? So, who's controlling this place? This dimension? Oh my god. It must be... Yep. You got it. It's him. Wait a minute, who's him? Could it be me? The player? So then, clearly we need to expose him. But we have to do it carefully, because he is powerful. Like a freaking god. I feel like it is me. Okay. I have a plan. Let's go. You're back. I sure am. Kelso and I had a good talk. So, hmm. Let me ask you a question, Icarus. Player? How long have you been in this place? There is no time. I don't understand the question. What do you mean? Just what I asked. When did you first arrive in this place? Arrived? Well, hmm. Um. Hmm. A any of you, when was the last time you remember being outside this building? I... Hmm. This is odd. My memories of the past are fogged. <clears throat> I remember entering, but before that... I've only been here a few days. You guys feeling okay? 
Aha. Icarus, one more question. Is it Apollo? Can you share a few memories, Icarus, that you have of your cousin, Apollo? Apollo's my cousin. I haven't seen him for a long time, though. Before he arrived here. Huh, well, I, I can't remember the specifics of the last time I saw him. You don't remember? Cousin, I'm insulted. I'm not surprised. Icarus, prepare to have your mind freaking blown. Here I go. This man, Apollo, is not your cousin. What? Not only that, he's probably not even human. Hold on one second. Click. <laughs> guess what I just did. Don't guess, I'll tell you. I just activated my auto-destruct sequence. In five minutes, my reactor will blow with the 97.835 megatons. Um, I disagree with your decision making. So, Apollo. The sequence is locked in. Only I can stop it. Hmm. Okay, Mark 22. What do you want? I want you to tell everyone the truth. <sighs> okay. Yes, Icarus. I am not your cousin. Go on. <sighs> okay. Yes, I'm not... human. This is closer to my natural state. Hi! What? This place? Their memories? <sighs> okay. This place is... Uh, not what it seems. I created it. This is a place of my creation. I've also blocked some of your memories. Plus, inserted a few fake ones. Anyways, it looks like this is all over. You win, Mark 22. Uh, what's going on here? The easiest way for me to explain is to restore your memories. Prepare to have your memories restored. This may get a little freaky. Alakazam! So... Your memories are all restored. And now you know. Holy crap. This whole time I've been stuck in some sort of... alternate dimension. A dimension... of typing. How, how long have we been here? In here, time has no meaning. Years and years and years. But outside, just a few hours will have passed. This is totally nuts. Mark 22, how did you figure this out? Well, it was partly thanks to Kelso. Kelso's mind has not been affected this entire time. He left me some clues to help me realize the truth. Also, importantly, Digby has been talking to me via direct radio wave. He helped me understand what was really going on in this place. Kelso, I had no idea I was unable to alter your mind state. <clears throat> Why did you say nothing earlier? Are you kidding? I saw what you could do in this place. I saw what you could do to these guys' minds. What the heck could I do? No way was I, no way was I about to anger a god. Apollo, since you're some sort of crazy energy being, I knew you were probably invincible. However, I realized that I could use my self-destruct mechanism to put you in checkmate. I knew you wouldn't allow these people, your pawns, to be destroyed. But, guess what? 
Joke's on you. I lied. I don't have a self-destruct mechanism. <laughs> Owned. Eat it. Mark 22 outsmarts a god. God damn. Wait a minute. Lucida, how did you get here? You weren't on our ship. You're not a member of our crew. <laughs> That's true. I didn't even realize that. Okay. That's strange. Well, my ship was nearby. After you got sucked into the vortex with Jerry and Kelso, Mark 22 and Digby contacted me. I came to the rescue. Mark 22 and I tried to investigate the vortex on our own. But it didn't work. We just got sucked in too. As an ancient spirit being, it shames me to have been hoodwinked so badly. Total shame. Total shame happening over here. Don't worry about it, Jerry. There was nothing you could have done. But there's something you can do for me now. Head back to the ship and make sure it's okay. Are you sure, Icarus? Yeah, totally. I'm pretty sure we're safe now. Meanwhile, the IBSC pickle needs its crew. So get out of here. That's an order. I'll fill you in back on the ship. Apollo, fulfill your end of the bargain. No probs. Here you go. Freedom lies beyond the door. Just step through, and poof, you'll find yourself back on your ship. Icarus, it has been an honor typing with thee. Be safe. Hurry back to the ships that we may resume our adventures. See you in a few, Jerry. Kelso, our ship needs its phone master. It's communications officer. God. Okay, I've had enough of this place. Typing this, typing that, whatever. Peace. Lucida. If I had any idea that attempting to risk... Attempt... Oh, that's not correct either. I'm gonna read it as it is, just for the fun of it. If I had any idea that attempting to rescuing you would get me... Would get me trapped in a typing dimension. Anyways, the next time you get trapped in a vortex, you're on your own. Although... Looking back... It's been fun. In a weird way. I'll be in contact later. Goodbye for now. Well, Mark 22, that just leaves us. Yep. Well, even though I'm an engineer in real life, I gotta say, I really enjoyed this whole detective thing. I think it really suits me. If there's ever a weird mystery in the IBSC pickle, I might put on this detective suit and go to town. Sounds good to me. You've proven yourself to be a great detective. In fact, how do you feel about this? I officially promote you. Your new, ti your new title will be Lead Engineer and Detective. Oh yeah, I like the sound of that. Detective. Detective Mark 22. Anyways, case closed. And there he goes. And now only we remain. Before I leave, we need to talk. You scrambled the memories of me and my crew, imprisoned us here, in typing limbo. Why? Why did you do it? 
allow me to explain. But, I will explain in the way I know best. Through typing. And this time, you, Icarus, shall do the typing. But I can't type. You know this. Icarus. After all this time, how can you not know the truth about typing? You see, typing isn't something you do with your fingers. It's something you do with your heart. Player, it is time for you to leave. It is time for Icarus to type on his own. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> that was my generated character, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, peace out, good luck Icarus, bye! <laughs> that face! <laughs> Okay, now I will explain, and you, Icarus, will type. Good luck, Icarus. Wait, am I the one actually doing the typing? I thought I left. Okay. Apparently I'm actually typing. In this dimension, whatever one yearns for most, I can create. I sensed a yearning within you and created this place. A place where your greatest dream to immerse yourself in the world of typing was reality. I think I understand. When I arrived, you sensed that the ability to type was my greatest yearning. When you created this place, you did it because you thought it would please me. But why a murder mystery? Allow me to continue. In order to make my world of typing an exciting one, I created a series of events that were overcome with typing. I had you battle Satan command armies, solve a murder, and countless more. I don't spell scenarios very often. Countless more scenarios. There we go. All to instill in you the wonder of typing. I understand. Simply teaching me to type wasn't enough. In this place, typing had to be more than just typing. So you created these scenarios, all involving typing. But that's still messed up. To trap me here without my consent goes against our moral system. We humans need freedom to survive. Well, maybe we don't literally need it to survive, but boy do we like it. We talk about freedom, like, all the time. I can explain that too. Here I go. I've done this countless times before with countless races. You, humans, were the first to rebel. I did not understand how much you guys loved freedom. And for this, whoops, lol, I apologize. My bad. I see. So, you know what you have to do now. Yep, I understand now. I have to grant you freedom. Will we meet again? If ever you wish to meet again, simply look at the object and wish it to be so. You will know the object when you see it. I understand. Before I go, maybe one last time, for old time's sake, go for it. <clears throat> Welcome to Icarus Proudbottom Teaches Typing. I'm your host, Icarus, and this is my sidekick, Jerry. Oh wait, Jerry's not here anymore. Whoops. Uh, let's start with an easy one. 
Good luck. Back to our roots. Welcome to Icarus Proud. Bottom. Peach is typing. That felt good. Well, Apollo. If that's even your real name. My ship needs me. Even if I disagree with your methods. I thank you for the gift. The gift of typing. It's what I do. Farewell. Good luck with your next adventure. Sea pickle. One year later. Jesus, that's a lot of time to pass. What's gonna happen? So, the Doguna turns to the Minoi, and guess what he says? Well, what does he say? Guess. Oh, not this again. What in the hell is this? <laughs> also, I didn't realize Jerry had such a deep voice. I would have expected his voice to be really high-pitched. Oh my god. Look at his eyes. They follow my cursor. And they're kind of creepy. Okay, hi Jerry. Jerry, guess what the Dogonet says. I'm too busy pressing these buttons to think about it. Hello? I'm clicking it. It's not working. Didn't work. Why doesn't it work? Did I break the game? I'm pretty sure the game's over. Like, I think this is just kind of like a fun little thing. Did I misread the... Uh, the instructions? Did... You just click, right? Is this part of the joke of the game, or did I break it, or am I just misunderstanding something? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Okay. Weird. I think I broke it. Okay, uh, can I go to the main... Can I go to the main menu? Let me refresh it. Okay, let me enter a password. Uh, it was Sea Pickle, right? Hopefully it works this time. <clears throat> so, the Doguna turns to the Minoi, and guess what he says? Well, what does he say? Guess. Oh, not this again. Okay, let's click someone else this time. Mark 22, guess what the Doguna says? Right, Waker, he says something causing us to produce one of these sounds. Ha ha ha, ho ho ho, or he he he. <laughs> okay, Digby, guess what he says? Listen to me, I don't know what he says. I don't care what he says. You've been telling this joke for nine minutes. Kelso, guess what the Dogonet says? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I haven't really been paying attention. <laughs> Jerry, guess what the Dogonet says? I'm too busy pressing these buttons to think about it. Okay, okay. So, the Dogonet turns to the Minoi, and he says... Telephone! Kelso, incoming message from the IBS Ascender. Put it on the main screen. Wait, what does the Dogonet say to the Minoi? I'll finish a joke after this call. <laughs> Is this guy kidding? Captain Proudbottom, I'm just checking in. How's the IBS Sea Pickle? Best ship in the fleet. And there goes life support. <laughs> what a ship. Well, it's great to see you haven't trapped your entire crew in another typing dimension. Technically, it's not a typing dimension. It's a long story. Well, would you go back? Hmm. Would I? Yeah! 
You know what? Someday, I think I would. Oh yeah, absolutely. Being a typing teacher is my dream. Anyways, why don't you beam over for a minute? We can drink a shelf of Chino, talk about old times. Quick, cut the signal. Uh oh, losing the connection. Good luck. See you later. <laughs> we ejected. Jerry, mind taking over the bridge for a minute? There's something I gotta check out in my quarters. No problem, Icarus. Is that a keyboard? It's a keyboard shaped box. <laughs> well, what the hell was that about? Welcome back to the Typescape. I'm your host, Icarus Proudbottom. And this is my little sidekick, Jerry. Hola. I'm an Asian American Indian spirit animal. You sure are, Jerry. You sure are. Anyways, that's it. Five long episodes. Done. I can't thank you enough for sticking around for the whole show. All that's left is the credits. Oh god, do I have to type through it? <laughs> I have to type out the credits. Let's type out the credits. And make sure you put your heart into this one. It's the last thing you'll ever type with us. Think about that. I don't... I don't know if I like typing out credits. Icarus Proud Bottoms World of Typing Weekly was produced by... I can't pronounce people's names, so I'm not gonna try. Dan... I don't know how to pronounce that either, so I'm not gonna try. Also known... Uh, as oh my god I can't type also known as Holy Wow Studios voice acting for Jerry provided by Kyle there we go I need some more hearts Munley that one I can pronounce voice acting for Mark 20 Mark 22 provided by Simon Taylor all other voices by Dan something and another name of some sort. Special thanks to Ben Service for testing and feedback. And to you, the player, for putting up with all of this. Well, I think that's it. If you're interested in the making of this game, or want to learn more about or want to learn more about that weird ending, go to the Holy Well website and read the postmortem. Fare thee well, player. For now, this is goodbye. Although I suspect we'll see more of each other one day. So, goodbye. For now. I definitely suspect we'll be seeing more of each other soon. Alright, well there's the episode of Icarus Proud Bottoms World of Typing Weekly. But I'm pretty sure the series in some sort, the Icarus series that is, is going to continue in some fashion. And there's certainly a lot of directions it can go, especially since they don't particularly seem to care about grounding it to any sort of reality. They could really do literally anything they want, I think. Pretty much. I mean, we have al alternate dimensions and vortexes or vortices, or however you would say that. And the sea pickle, which is actually in space. There's a lot of directions they could go. Literally and figuratively. Because they're in space, so they can go wherever the hell they want. <laughs> oh. Dude, that's it. No, Icarus, go away. I'm, I'm talking to people here. You're interrupting me. It's rude. Get out of here. Scram. Skedaddle. No, I don't want to. Meanie. 
Anyway, ignore him. <laughs> Are you kidding? Go! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they know exactly what players are going to be doing. What more could you possibly want? Just close the browser tab and live your life. Bye now. I don't think he's going to go away. Anyway, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. Icarus interrupted me, the dickbag. Ah! What if I didn't come back just now? How long would you have stared at these curtains? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, what the hell was I talking about? I'm totally distracted now. Uh, <laughs> I really don't remember what I was talking about exactly. But yeah, I've just really enjoyed this series. You know, I enjoyed the original game, and... I really like this episodic weekly format. It's really fun to have something to come back to. It's great. It's just, I love this series. It's just so fun to play. It's clever, it's funny. It's always a good time. You know, I don't play a lot of light-hearted games for the most part, so it's nice to have one that is like that. Where you just relax and play it and just have fun with it. It's really good. And yeah, I can't wait to see what they do next. I'm definitely going to be playing it. And almost certain they're going to continue the Icarus saga, or whatever you'd call it. And like Jerry mentioned... Uh, like Jerry mentioned at uh, the end of the game just a little bit ago, there is a post-mortem on their website. If you go to the same spot... Um, actually, if you go to the link below... Yeah, the link in the description that takes you to all of the episodes for World of Typing Weekly. I believe it's right after the last episode, this episode 5. You'll see the link to the post-mortem there. Which, of course, I haven't read yet because I don't want to spoil... I didn't want to spoil what happened in this episode, but I am going to read it tonight. So if you're interested in reading more about how the game is made, and everything that's gone into it, give it a look. Alright, well, I hope you've enjoyed my playthrough of Icarus Proud Bottom's World of Typing Weekly. And hopefully someday soon, I'll return with more Icarus. Thank you for watching.